Welcome to the second half of KISS Community Connections 103.1 KISS FM and um, we're still talking and I'm still the guest and the host and we're going to talk about as I've talked a little bit about um, in the last session, first session is we're going to talk about the election process that's coming up. <clears throat> um, we still have the voter ID bill so you still need ID to get to vote and we have plenty of time now to help people who don't have voter an ID we have plenty of time to help them get one. They do need this. They do need their birth certificate and all the other you know, information to prove who they are, so they can get an ID card if they don't have a driver's license. Also, if it's a senior citizen and they're of a certain age, I'll say like in their eighties uh, or older, they don't have a birth certificate. They don't because they weren't given at that time. They were just on a sheet of paper and ten to one, and their Bible is when they were born and all that good stuff. You can still take them to the Department of Motor Vehicles and they can still get an ID because you're going to ID them. You you are. And then there are several pieces of things they're going to have them bring with them, such as utility bills um, and whatever else they have that's on that list to attach them to attach that name to them. But you can verify who they are, how long you've known them and everything else. You can help verify a person that's 80 and above to help them get a voter ID. So right now. If they don't have a driver's license right now today, you need to help them get it before our primary election is in March. Primary election is a, uh, March 18th, so they have 30 days prior to that, which would be February 18th, to get all that done. So let's start now. If you're not registered to vote, you need to get registered to vote so that you can vote in the primary election um, in, in March. We need to be ready. We need to be moving because, like I said, this is a very important election. This is not the first time it's ever happened but next year like I said we could change the dynamics of voting and everybody who's going to vote who's going to run for office has already been solidified because they've already filed their paperwork so you can always check on who is going to run for what office and we need to be smart about it you know also we need to remember where to place people everybody is not a political candidate everybody cannot be a political candidate some people need to stay in strategic roles and we need to understand roles that people are in. You have people that are activists who will kick in the door, talk to the politicians, that, that person that does all those things that, you know, targets the governor, hey, listen, this is wrong about this. That person is, is there to do their job and they're good at it and they need to stay there. And you need to support them in that role because it takes all these roles in order to, to get this done. If we have one person that's, um, I'll say the county commissioner. Let's say we have a county commissioner and we like that person being county commissioner. We want them to continue in that role. Then we need to build a support group behind that person. Your support group is one, your activist. Your activist is the one who, who like I said, with the mouth, who's gonna knock down doors, kick in, step on desks. This is not right, this is not going right. That, pilot, that person running in that office needs that person. That person needs to be there. Then you have the person who will send out all the, you have the quiet person who wants to stay behind the scenes and do only behind the scenes things. And you might say, no, you need to get up there and talk. No, if they're best behind the scenes, then utilize them doing your media stuff because they're, they're behind the scenes and they're good with that. You let them do that and let that be what they do for all candidates that let's say people are supporting. If you have a group of people and they say, we're gonna put this person in or leave this person in, then you build a team, but you don't build a team of all the same people because it fails. So in that team, you need that activist person who's going to, you know, set some fire up under people by saying, this is what we need, this is what we want, this is this, this and that. Let that person do that job and you keep them over there and support them because that's what they do this well. You have one who says, I want to stay at home. I'm not really the out there person. Okay, then there could be your media person and let them stay there because that's their comfort zone. Don't try to move them to knock on doors. Because they might not be knock on door people. And I'll say myself, I'm the activist person. I'm going to call you, come visit you, tell you what you need to be doing. I'm going to even tell you what you better do because candidates and well, elected officials, they work for us. We don't work for them. So you tell them what you want because we help pay them. So I'm going to tell you what I want. So don't don't ask me to knock on doors because I'm, I'm not going to knock on doors. Don't, don't ask me to do the media person because I'm not doing that. My specialty is here, so I should stay here, and you should respect the fact that I need to stay here. Now, you do have people who like knocking on doors and walking and doing all that. That's good. That, that's great. You need that group. Then you need that group to stay over there. But don't ask everybody else to cross over and do that. 
See, when we build a team, we have a bad habit of saying, we're all walking at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then I don't show up and someone else show up. You go where you're at. I don't do that. You know, so don't say, well, you really don't want the person to win. You really don't. Don't do that. They, they want the person to win, but they're not knocking on doors. And I'll say, for I'm not knocking on my door. It's not that I'm too good for it. That's not my expertise and that's not my zone of being comfortable. I'm, I'm not doing that. I am not. So leave the person that's an activist. Leave the person that stays behind and writes the letters, does the media thing. Leave, leave them where they are. And the people who want to walk and pass on information, put them there where they are too. And then you have the one that's going to be at the forum asking questions that the candidate has, that you've already prepared for that candidate. Have that person there at every forum asking those same questions because they're working for the candidate that you want in office or you want to stay in or the one you want to, excuse me, stay in office. That person is there and that's their job. That's what their job is, is to pull the questions, pull the questions and pull the questions out that will be good for that candidate to win. So you need that person sitting there and every time they're gonna ask not the same questions, but they're gonna ask different questions, but it's already been planned, the answer's already been planned, the strategy's in process. So let that person do their job. So they're needed. Don't ask them to knock on doors because they might not knock on doors. That's not their thing. They don't want to do that. Don't ask them to do the media part. It's not their comfort zone. Don't ask them to do the activist part. It's not their comfort zone. And like I said, too many times I've worked a lot of elections and I said, we're knocking doors. I'm like, good, y'all have fun. They said, what, y'all have fun? Because I don't do that. Then you have phone banking. Phone banking is, you know, the, same, the, the calls. They tell you to come out and vote for a person. Okay, you have a group of people that love that. That's not me. So the person who does the activist part, the person who does media, the one who's in there asking the questions, the person who does the phone baking and the walking, those all could be different people. And that's fantastic because you're not asking anybody to cross over to something that's not good for them. But that, that, that really isn't good. So when you build a team for elections, when you build a team for candidates, make sure that your team members know where they're best at and leave them there where they leave them there because too many times i see people cr criticize saying well just, we were walking and they didn't show up because they don't walk with, they don't that's not their job to do that's not what they do best you might have people walking and other people are sitting there calling you might sit from 10 to 1 we're walking we're doing calling we're doing social media and, and the activist person is doing their thing that could all be happening from 10 to 1 at the same time. Do you matter? Now imagine all that happening at one time. How many people are we actually reaching? A whole mass of people. Versus you tell everybody to drop and come walk. If we all drop, first of all, you ask me to drop, I'm going to be the worst door knocker that you could possibly find. I am not good at it, and I'll tell you, I'm not good at it. And anybody, I'm not good at it. I don't do it. I'm not well at it. Okay, fine. Then you don't let them do that. But you gotta build, when you build a team for an election, you gotta build the right team. And I'll use Alabama as, as one thing. The women who got together and voted that way, they got together as a group. And they, that's what they were gonna do. They, they focused on what they were gonna do and how they were gonna do it. The party focused on a way to do it and how they were gonna do it. Everybody had a strategic plan on how they were gonna do it and they actually stayed in their plan and actually made it work. So what I'm saying is for this upcoming election, use everybody at where their expertise is don't put people in places where they don't work well at and just say you can do this if the person you know you want to win you want this person to win this is how you'll do it no 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 let everybody stay where they are and together we can all win we can all win the election we can turn the tides of the united states we can make things I don't, and everybody said make America great again. Uh, when was it ever great first time? I just need to know when was it ever great? And it's not about making a great uh, America great again. It's not even about uh, making America great. It's about making America fair. Just think about it. It can be great for you and terrible for me, but it can be fair for everybody. So we're doing this because we want a fair playing field. We don't want a rich and poor playing field. We don't want to be Oh, you can't afford this, really? Well, you just out. We don't want that kind of play. We want a fair and equal playing field for everybody. For for everybody. So let's take out all the crazy quotes that, that we do here. Let's take them all out. Let's get to work. Let's roll our sleeves up. And don't forget your senior citizens when it's time to vote. Give them their information. Give them and play and learn the game of the of the other side. 
the other team learn their game for real because they come and learn yours they, they they come and learn your game real quick so learn theirs learn how they're doing things if they're doing something that works for them then you might have to slide it over here and say you know what this is what they did we're going to implement some of it not all of it we're going to implement some of it and we're going to do it we're going to work smart not hard but smart there are two different things to that you, know, you can work hard and lose you work smart and you win but now it's time to build a team now it's time to start setting up candidates forms to make these people understand that you mean business that we're not playing around we need to have multiple forms we need to ask hard questions do not up and ask are you going to raise my taxes because that person can only speak for themselves and that's not an answer they can actually if anybody says no they're lying to you because during the time that they're there there might come a time when they have to do so so if they say oh yeah he said he's not going to raise them he's him you got other people that's got to vote or her the other people have to vote for them so don't ask the tax question ask the other question person let running for legislator what do you think about public schools what do you think about the funding of public schools you know in texas our special ed department is, is totally a nightmare what are you going to do to fix it ask those questions well, the, the point questions what are you going to do for this group of people what are we going to do about the homeless in our area that's getting more and more and more growing what are we going to do ask the questions about your community from the ground up don't ask them questions like i said that they really unfairly and can't ask and also study what the candidate does if they're running for a county commissioner understand what a county commissioner is and in fact i guess in one of my shows in january we'll we'll get some i'll get someone to come in and talk to you but understand what that position does and i'm gonna tell you the craziness about the county com commissioner i've talked to a lot of people this week about it do you know that your county commissioner makes eighty four thousand dollars a year and all he or she has to do is win an election that's it that, 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 that's it they, there's gotta, they have to win an election there's no background knowledge you need there's no degree process none of that but they make over 80 like say eight more than over eighty thousand dollars a year and all they had to do was win an election that's it that, that's it that position should always have a bunch of people running for it when they don't because you know why we don't know that because we never read about it we didn't think about it and we just don't know because we're really fighting a battle probably that we don't even need to fight but did you know that person makes that money and and they don't have to know anything Sa same with your state legislator your legislator he makes all his money he or she makes all his money they don't have to have any pre prerequisite on anything they need to know about politics yes they need to know what they think they can do yes but they just have to win an election all these seats you just have to win the election it doesn't take a college degree you don't have to have no you but you do have to have knowledge of politics laws things that you can do can do and you need to know about that position but you know we need to study what these positions do so we don't ask questions that you can't answer you know um and we also have a person running for county judge we need to know and understand that person's position and what they do you know i used to go to juvie um and see the kids there you know and one day i went and they served them a chicken sandwich but you could tell the chicken sandwich had been heated again uh, you know reheated again well i had a question about that you know and, I knew asking nobody at that detention center could answer my question because it's not their job to ask their question. So what did I do? I called my county commissioner. Hey, and I first I accused him of, of serving food. I did, I really did, because he's county commissioners, um, Bell County Juvenile Detention Center. So I accused him of serving his food like this. I did. I got on him really bad. I knew it's not his direct job, but it's in his area. So I, I accused. I told him he served those kids some warmed over sandwiches reheated fries you know and and i went i went off on him but i knew what i made him do i knew that was going to force him to do because since i went off on him he had to go and find out what i was talking about he had to go and investigate it because he knew don't come back and tell me you didn't find nothing so he went he called me back and he explained you know what happened he explained what would never happen again and i you know as you know i went back to check and it, it didn't happen any the next time i went back I don't know how that happened or some whatever because no one knew i was coming but they had chicken sandwiches again and though they look good enough for me to buy one they were looking good you know the kids were they they you know I, sitting down like how it tastes they say it's hot i said does it taste 
whatever you know i did the taste reheated the bun looked fresh the bun looked good you know they left it up and there's some cheese there okay the cheese did not look like it was reheated again because we know how reheated cheese looks but the sandwich was actually good it was actually warm and i was happy i was happy because i told him if it happens again i'm gonna call you some more you know then what then you know again i asked the kids how do you get your underwear but i asked all those questions uh, all those questions i went back to them again i'm like you yeah, having kids wear whatever whatever i was fussing about you know and he explained it to me we went around it again but i held him accountable and i made him go find the work and then tell me what it was but that's because i was holding him accountable it wasn't because i so yelling at the people at the detention center and asking them 50 questions i wasn't going to get anywhere with them I knew I wasn't. It was craziness. So I went to the county commissioner and, and, and accused him of it. And I knew by that he was going to move and do something because he knows I always I call them and often and fuss about something that uh, I disagree with. But we need to do those things. See something, say something. Don't hold it back in. You know, if you live in Killeen where everybody wants to know what the police chief going to do about crime, that is the dumbest question in the world. It is. It's totally dumb because he can't fix it by himself. He cannot walk out in the middle of Colleen and say, hey, I need y'all to stop and go back to his office. First of all, he'd be arrested for being crazy. So he can't do it by himself without the public helping. No police chief can do anything about stopping crime without the help of the public. It, it's a team. It is a team effort. And the police department, yeah, might, they, you might say, well, they need to be a little more friendly. Okay, that could be true too, relate, relate that to the chief. But also, what about you in the community? When you see something, you don't say anything. You close the door and go, I'm not going to be bothered with that. And then you very one who said, why didn't catch him? Because you said you weren't going to be bothered with it. And you're the only one that's seen it. You don't want to be bothered. So now you want to know why they still free. Or well, maybe because you didn't do anything about it. So we must be proactive in this. If you want crime to stop, we want to slow down, then we need to be proactive about it. We need to assist too. Because there's always something that we can do. Instead of just laying the blame on saying, you know, yeah, we got a new chief, he ain't about nothing. He, he can't even stop, no, he can't even stop crime. Then I need you to explain to me how one single person can do that. Because if you can, you're good. If you really, if you can explain to anybody how one person can do it, it, it does, it's a community effort. It's a team effort. You know, it's like school. Uh, we have kids in school who can't tie their shoe. And uh, parents will say, I thought that was the school's job. My answer is, since when was it our job to teach your kid how to tie their shoe? I, I can't even remember when it became our job to do that. You know, so we need to take responsibility for things we're responsible for and we need to actually do them. Crime, some of it's our fault. We look away. We, we look away because we don't want to get involved, but we want you to fix it, but we don't want to get involved. Stop doing that. It takes, like I said, it takes team effort and it takes community effort. You don't want your name mentioned, then there's Crime Stoppers. Call that number and your name won't be mentioned. They'll have to give you a number because, you know, you get paid for Crime Stoppers. You know, if you turn someone in and there's a reward, they'll sign you with a number and not your name. So if you don't want your name mentioned, do it that way. But by all means, start stepping up to the plate and quit. It's, it's easy to say he should do it. Well, yeah, he's doing what he can do. He might have the police work different hours, change their, change how they were, uh, make them get in the street more. But still, guess what? It's, it's not going to be 100% surefire cure that he alone by himself can stop crime. So let's not, you know, go after him and say he couldn't even stop a robbery. Well, if he don't know anything about it, it's kind of hard to stop it. But if you saw it, you can. You know, it, and it goes back to um, a couple, um, Thanksgiving time. I was driving down Foothill Road and this lady was getting beat up in the bus, th in the little bus station, the little bus thing that they got where you catch the bus by a guy <clears throat> but it took women to get out of the car to stop him men drove by they they just drove by they drove by they didn't do anything about it but blew their horn because we stopped our cars not in the middle of the street but on the shoulder of a street which was illegal but we stopped there to, to assist her men drove by a lot of people drove by why because they probably didn't want nothing to do with it nothing he could have beat her to death probably and nobody would have everybody would just drove on by we've become so desensitized just drive by well we didn't drive by the lady who stopped i didn't know who she was <laughs> no clue but we both stopped decided that we need to do something about it and all it took was us to yell at him 
because you know he turned around looked at us and oh gosh didn't know what we we're going to do he didn't know we didn't know either but we knew that we needed to get out and stop him from doing what he was doing <clears throat> he left the scene of where he was and she went she went one way he went the other way we don't know if they got back together again and it continued we have no clue but at that point in time we stood up and we stopped it my thing was i don't know why everybody else is driving by but i'll tell you what they probably thought <clears throat> i'm not getting involved in that i'm not but if there was their daughter and that was happening to i guarantee you they would have been upset like we were this girl wasn't in relation to us but we were upset that everybody wasn't stopping we're like where the man at some men gotta see us standing here busting at this idiot but they didn't stop just kept driving by <clears throat> so is this a society i live in in Killeen? i suppose it is I, I i guess it is i guess it's like i said we're so desensitized about what goes on we just let it go and we felt it was it was okay well we need to change that we need, we need to get out of that we, we need to change so if we want things to change we have to be a part of the change you know if we want uh better politicians in office then we need to change it they can't change it we, we need to change it if we want better rules and better things going on we want to lessen crime then we need to help change it because one person can't change it one person has never ever been able to change anything totally at all so we, we need to stop saying that we need to become a part of the solution you know it's easy to be the negative part of the problem it's really easy to be the negative well oh man that's so easy but we need to flip it and be the positive part of, of what's going on because if we expect better we need to do better and be better too not to say we're criminals but we need if, if we want things to go right then we need to go right with them we need to start speaking up we need to start saying something because <clears throat> if you don't then you're saying it's okay to do whatever's going on. Now, you might tell me, no, Phyllis, is not right, but I'm saying it is. If we allow things to happen and we just sit back, then you are okay with it happening and you should never complain. Ever, ever, ever. You should never complain. You should not complain. So if you don't vote in next year's election at all, the primary, don't complain. Now, the primary election, I'm gonna explain that because that, that seems to be a big headache for people. The primary election, you have to declare what party you're in. You, you, you do. You have to declare Republican or Democrat. You have to declare it straight up, got to say it, and, and you do. So a lot of people don't vote in the primary because they don't want people to know what party they're voting for. And that's true. You have a whole bunch of folks who they're not voting in the primary election. You'll never see them vote because they don't want to declare what party they're in because they want to stay kind of neutral because in november's election remember you don't declare everybody's on one ballot and you're good to go and i don't know if you paid attention to you know before if you were a republican you could check that one box at the top and vote everybody guess what that box at the top doesn't exist anymore you while you were sleeping and paying attention to something else that box changed it's not there it is no longer there so in texas now that straight ticket voting is over no more straight ticket now you got to actually physically check every box how many people don't know that a whole bunch a whole lot of people gonna be looking at where's the box at it doesn't exist anymore it, it doesn't which means you're looking like the to the judge you're gonna look like the complete nut because they're gonna do you know change you're gonna go no oh okay well it, it changed in 2017 while you asleep while you were chilling while you were relaxing your legislators decided to go okay yeah sure let's take away the straight ticket voting let's take it away and you allowed it to be taken away you're going to tell me that you didn't allow it i'm going to say you did because it happened in your own state it, it happened so straight ticket voting died it, it's gone doesn't exist in texas anymore so now you must go back and go down and check all the boxes but remember how you need to vote remember primary you declare what party you in in november you do not you have people come saying last year I did or we didn't know you really know you you didn't you, you did not and also let's understand your city council is neither city council is it doesn't you there's no party partisan vote in your city council so you know you gonna say I'm not gonna vote for this council person because they're Republican I'm not voting for this because they're Democrat the city council seat doesn't matter what you are because you're all for the city the city is a nonpartisan city so that doesn't the, what party that person is in the school or that's running for i'll say school board also and city council it doesn't matter it, it really doesn't matter because it, it's a totally different world 
they're not either one in in city elections that doesn't matter so yeah people caught up in that in the city election and I can't understand why they're caught up when it's a nonpartisan position never in your life will you ever see city council Democrat or Republican school board Democrat or Republican because it, that issue doesn't start there it's never there it starts on the county level and it goes from the county level on up but city it's not so we don't need to say that no more we can drop that out of our language and we need to move on but for right now we need to go back and make sure everybody registered to vote we need to go back and make sure our senior citizens have a voter ID voter card uh, ID card you know the state issued one we need to go back and make sure that happens we need to make sure that people are informed people don't vote because they don't understand some people don't vote and it's not because they don't want to vote they don't understand the issue because sometimes the issue is written in college language and not fifth grade language so you can easily be have a bill and you need to vote yes but it's so confusing to you you say i'm not vote, i'm voting no on that because i don't even understand it that means we failed so it's not voter registration is our problem it's voter education and getting people to understand the bills and to get them out to vote so i'm challenging everybody including me that we need to do more voter education we, we really need to we need to do that we need to step up with it and make sure our people are informed about what they're voting on make sure people are informed that there's no more straight ticket voting so then when they get in to see that ballot they're gonna go well, what happened well they'll already know what happened because see when we get to not know what happened confusion sets in if somebody else wins we lose because we didn't know and i'll say you didn't know because you didn't pay attention because it was in the paper it was on the news it's on the internet and somehow we all slept it so um we need to step up shake your head and i know holiday is coming too and people are gonna say i'll focus on that after the holiday uh it's craziness you can't do that we live in a time where that, that, that you lose you lost that you can't say this is a holiday and i'm gonna focus on it later no you need to focus on it now and all through the holiday because guess what this affects your holiday this affects how much money you're going to get and not going to get. This affects how it's going to run, what's going to, it affects that. So right now, today, we need to start focusing on what's going to happen in 2018. And while you focus on 2018, I always remember Alabama. I always remember them. Remember your vote did count because theirs did. Remember who were the strongest voters, African-American females. So I guess the males have slipped back a little bit. Maybe you need to get up there, but African-American females. Why? I'll say it's because they realized what kind of man this was and they were going to stop it. You know, be be, be weary, be, be very weary. And, and, and when you hear those things and people are going to go, yeah, put him in anyway. No, 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 don't do that. Don't, don't do that. And uh, as far as the sexual harassment, don't always think it's up at the top. It's never going to happen on the bottom of where you live because I'll say this and I'm not gonna mention names, but if you all remember back the city of Killeen, a couple of years ago, uh, we had a city official. He, uh, he was having an uh, extramarital affair with one of the employees and uh, he, he moved up to a position and then someone else moved up, but he promised her she would move up. And when she didn't move up, now mind you, they had a 10 year affair, but when she didn't move up, the city paid $60,000 to her. Not 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 sixty dollars, not six hundred dollars, not six sixty thousand dollars. The city paid for their affair for ten years because she didn't get a position that he promised her. So she in turn sued him for sexual harassment. She and all these other things. Then we paid ten thousand dollars for it. So don't say it can't happen in your city because it did. It did, and you can go back and, and and Google it and check who he is, who she is. Uh, uh, right now today. So we, we did it. So don't say it happens only on that level. It happened on our level too. You know, and also during all this, we need to be careful because in, in the midst of all this budget cuts, sexual harassment, we lost two people. Not, they didn't die, but we lost two people. Tavis Smiley uh, got hit with sexual harassment case and we don't know whether, whatever, how that happened or how it's going. But he's had taken out there. But Roland Martin, he lost his job and had nothing to do with sexual harassment. His was a budget cut. Now come on, think about the game wise. Here's a man who has the strong show on your station, on your on your on your radio on your television station, 
on TV One. Strong, strong show. Get the word out there. And you got some crazy buffoonery shows on that same station. But when a budget cut, you cut your toughest person. Does it make sense to you? Didn't make sense to me. So in our community, we lost two voices. And think about it. In our community, we lost two voices. One, sexual harassment. One, a budget cut. The budget cut thing doesn't make sense. And and the sexual harassment thing, I don't know. We don't know how it goes. Uh, Tavis Smiley said it was consensual, so we don't know. But my thing is, we have, two, we have a 2018 election coming, and two of our strongest voices are gone. We got to replace them somehow. We got to do something about that. Somebody else needs to step up to the plate. I know somebody else is ready, so somebody else needs to step up to the plate. Well, I want to thank you for listening to me for a whole hour. And while we talked about what we need to do and what we're going to do, and frankly, uh, we kind of better do it because we want some change. And we see all these crazy things going on on the news. We see them in the paper. We need to start paying attention. And like I said, when the focus is all the way over here on, on the left on sexual harassment, it's good that it's brought up, but go back and look on the other side and see what's going on over there. Because like I said, now the internet, the internet cap and the internet rule is gone. President Obama, well, ex-president, he put it in there as a safeguard to us. No, it's gone now. And it went the same week as they were talking about Alabama. It, it went away that week. The vote was in. It, and it's, it's changed now. The tax bill, thank heavens, it didn't get changed because it would have went another way too because we weren't paying attention. But keep your eyes open, your ears open. <clears throat> uh, let's get rid of harassment because we can. We need to. We need to stop it. We need to put to quit, you know, um, just letting it ride and turning the other head and cheek. And all. No, we need to stop it and say something about it. So I want to thank everyone for listening to Kiss Community Connections on My Kiss 1031. And I want you to always remember you cannot live a positive life with a negative mind. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Bye now.